good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on which time zone you're joining us from. And a warm welcome to each one of you. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time to join this session. And yes, our, um, so without taking much time, I'm glad to introduce our uh, speaker for today, Mr. Mansoor Mohammad. Uh, Mansoor is a seasoned enterprise agile coach, uh, P3M and PMO consultant, trainer and mentor with 20 plus years of experience uh, specializing in strategy, execution and business agility. They excel in enterprise agile coaching and agile transformations. So uh, without any further ado, I would like to hand over the session to Mr. Mansoor. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words, uh, Esomia. That's, that's very good to, to hear from you. And it's been my pleasure always to host these sessions. Am I audible? Is my audio clear? Yes, Mansoor. Yeah. I just positioned my mic. So it's always uh, beautiful to talk to people from across the world and share my knowledge. So as uh, rightly introduced, my name is Mansoor. My research, my area of research is in strategy, leadership, and governance. And today I'm going to talk about leadership, right? And uh, today's webinar is going to be a very interesting webinar, some activities as we go. And today's webinar will talk about uh, the uh, leading with impact, developing leadership skills for project managers, right? So I've been a project myself, project manager myself for the last 20 years, and my story has been uh, as an accidental project manager. So I used to work for a company called EMC Data Storage Solution way back in Bangalore. Uh, and uh, I used to be a technology person. I used to love technology to the core. And uh, one fine day, my manager came up to me and he said, hey, Mansoor, there is a program happening called Project Management Professional. Why don't you take a look at that? Uh, and there's a lot of things which resonates with what you, what you do. And I said, oh, don't even call me manager. I'm, I'm a hardcore techie and management is something which, uh, you know, I didn't like that word. But he said, no, go and have a look at this program and, you know, you'll like it and uh, you'll enjoy it. Uh, and moreover, I want you to understand more of it and explain. And, you know, we both will clear the exam and I'm struggling with it and, I said, okay, let me go. And uh, I went to the session and there was a person who came all the way from a different part of the country. And uh, he delivered the lecture for five days. And we were sitting there as um, a, a disciple uh, listening to a priest, like, you know, we are listening to a Sadhguru. So we, we were all sitting over then, you know, listening, listening, listening for five days. And I came back, I realized there's a lot of work which I did related and resonated to being a project manager. Okay, so that's where my journey started, completed my PMB training. And then I realized that most of work, what I do is technical project management, though it was not pure, pure project management. Right, a lot of technology stuff was there. I was, you know, initiating projects, I was planning projects, executing projects, monitoring and, and closing them. And I did realize that it's not only me and everyone in the team had leadership skills. And that's where I started getting interested. And that's why my journey started with a PNP and a PGMP and then a PFMP, right? And all these certifications about 30, 40 certifications, what I have currently with disciplined agile certifications and, you know, the scaled agile, that stuff. Uh, so that made me curious and take my journey forward. So today's session will understand the role of leadership with related to project management. Okay, that's that's the uh, focus of the talk, right? And we'll also understand what's the difference between a leader and a manager. Okay, uh, I'll ask you to put your thoughts in the chat so I can read it, right? And uh, or we can unmute if anyone has got anything to you know speak. You can unmute, you can talk. Let's keep this session interactive rather than a one-way conversation. We'll rather keep it as a two-way conversation. And at the end, we'll have some Q&A sessions and then we'll close the session. Right. So welcome everyone again from whichever part of the world you are. I'm based in Sydney. It's about 5, 10 p.m. here in Sydney. Um, it's a Thursday afternoon, pretty, pretty good weather. It's a bit cloudy. Uh, that's, that's where I am right now. I was in India for a holiday for almost about a month and a half, uh, and I just returned back. So apologies uh, if we had to cancel the last uh, session that was due to you know uh, my um, ill health. Uh, I, I underwent a surgery, so 
I had to cancel the training apologies for that. I think it was in the end of uh, January somewhere around that time. And we had to quickly reschedule it uh, when things came better. So thank you for uh, accommodating. All right, let's get started and see what we have in the show today. That is where my, my journey started, right? And today we are going to explore um, a few topics. Number one, the first topic is understanding the role of leadership in project management. We'll see the core competencies of project manager. We'll see uh, how these leadership skills will integrate in the PMP certification. And also we'll talk about how do we lead high performing team? What are high performing team? How do we inspire leadership? And also we'll look at some effective tools for leadership. Um, there will be a video uh, link. Okay, we'll see if we have time. We'll play that. Otherwise, I'll give you that as, uh, yeah. Yes, Sonia, I can see the screen. Yeah, let's go. We can move this. We can move this. We can move this. Yes. Next slide, please. Yeah. So let's understand the role of leadership in project management. Yeah, next slide. Right. Now, who could spot the difference between a manager versus a leader? Yes, please. You can raise your hand. We will unmute. Or you can put on the chat. What's the difference between a leader and a manager? Samyata says a leader inspires. Can we just turn that into a joke and say leaders inspires and managers perspire, make them sweat. So yeah, D difference between a manager and a leader, what do we have in the chat? Leader is doer, whereas manager is a delegator. Managers of ones work towards a project goal, very good. Leader is one who works towards the organization goal, very good. That's, that's a good, good analogy, anyone else? If I miss something else, so that's that's a good thought, right? So leader leads people, and the manager, you know, drives people, as we know. So yes, we have the title called a project manager, but actually, you're a leader. Okay, you're a leader by yourself. Your leader. Oh, you want to stop full screen share? What does it say? Do you want to stop entering full screen mode? Okay, all right. So let's go to the next slide, Samir. Yes, ma'am. All right, so pretty of your definitions are pretty correct, okay? So the manager drives employees, okay? Uh, instills fear, okay? Because this management styles have come from the hierarchy, right? For many, many years we used to have a hierarchy and things used to come top down and we used to have that fear. So that is where this management styles are coming in. One boss, everyone follows the boss place the blames and the breakdown to the people. Uh, he or she knows when it's done, says go and go do it, commands, right? Now, as a leader, you need to coach people, okay? It's very important to coach people. You need to generate enthusiasm. There's a beautiful video from Simon Sinek, uh, which I can share the link later at the end, which is called Good Leaders Start With Why, okay? They start with why they inspire actions and they inspire how things actually work, okay? Uh, they show how things to be get done, right? They set the intent, right? A good leader will set a good intent and gives credit to people, right? Uh, not takes all the credit. So um, in, in one of my engagements uh, in my previous work, uh, right? Uh, the, the leader made us do all the work and uh, once when it came to, to, to to take the award, uh, the leader did not go on the stage to take an award, but asked the team to go up to the stage and take an award, right? So that is where the leadership matters, okay? And leaders eat last. Leaders are the ones who eat last. Leaders give the credit to people. They develop people. They help people to move from a fixed mindset towards a growth mindset, right? And, and they always talk about we as people, right? They coach them. They generate enthusiasm. Right, and they set an intent or a direction. They empower people. Uh, they they build autonomous team. Okay, uh, they help people to make certain decisions. Right, so that's a big difference between a manager and a leader. Right, as we said, leader inspires people, coaches them. Right, and it's human to make mistake, but not repeat mistake. 
in in a management style, you might use I, and you may talk about authority. You may drive employees due to fear, right? Your KPIs, but in a leadership style, it is you need to know the purpose. Okay, so that's that's a key takeaway as we go. Thank you so much. Next slide, please. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You able to see the next slide? So, as I said, so the leader inspires vision. Setting a vision, setting a dream is very important. Setting that compelling vision is very important. Setting clear goals, articulate, articulating what is the future, what is the future state looking like, okay? Providing directions and alignment is very important. Fostering collaboration and communication is important, right? See wherever open communication channels are. How do you problem solve? How do you... You know, make decisions. Some decisions can be centralized at a leadership level. Some decisions can be decentralized, getting to the team level. So as a leader, you need to know which types of leadership, uh, which type of decisions need centralization, which type needs decentralization. Can anyone tell me what type of decisions could be centralized and what type of decisions could be decentralized? Anyone? Raise hands, we can unmute or put it in the chat. So what type of decisions could be centralized? And what type of decisions could be decentralized? Anyone? Now, if you're willing to talk, then you can raise your hand. Um, I, I can allow you to come and talk. Atam has raised his hand. We can unmute Gautam. We have two people raise hands. Samir. Samir, can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Rama. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to pay my views. In a centralized organization, we can say the planning, strategic, and the and the talent deployment are typically conducted by a single person. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a decentralized organization, it is formal decision making, which is distributed across the individuals. Okay, very good. Thank you, Ravan. Gautam? Unmute, uh, you can unmute yourself, Gautam. I love you to talk. Yeah, please unmute yourself. Okay, Priyanka, yeah. raise your hand. Priyanka's hand disappeared. Okay, that's all right. So, type of decisions which can be centralized are the ones which are infrequent, not very frequent, the decisions which, you know, help drive strategy, which is a lot of economies of scale, like, you know, quite expensive, right? Those could be centralized. Rest, you could decentralize decision-making, okay? The leader motivates and empowers teams to own the tasks, to navigate challenges, uncertainties, right? And drive improvement, continuous improvement. There's a world of continuous improvement. You need to look at continuous improvement. Japanese call it as Kaizen, right? Um, you need to look at that and always continuously improve, drive project success, enhance team performance. They, there's always room for improvement, room for getting better, okay? So that is what a leader does and helps team to move forward and help them align towards projected project objectives, make them understand the why before they do the what and the how. That plays a very important role. Next slide, please. Yeah. Yeah, let's move. Tendencies for project manager, let's see. So the first one is strategic thinking. So as a leader, you need to anticipate the future, what the future holds like, okay? You need to look at the future uh, and you need to look at what is happening. You need to look at the environment, right? The VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, ambiguity, right? You need to look at the PESO, the political, economic, social, right? You need to look at that. You need to have effective communication, okay? A good leader is a good orator because 90% of project managers time is spent on communication. 
up the ladder, down the ladder, at every level there is communication. Team building and motivation is very important. You need to identify individual strength. How do we do that? Uh, we need to understand what are our team members' strength. We could do Belbin's framework or we could use, uh, you know, Myers and Briggs test, right? We could look at, you know, how to create a positive environment, uh, conflict resolution and problem solving, you know, you know, address necessity of project managers to possess strong conflict resolution skills, uh, focus on decision making, make those, you know, choices, allow teams to make those choices wherever possible and stand behind the teams when they have to make a choice, right? And stand by them and stick to them. Uh, adaptability and resilience is very, very important. Uh, there may be setbacks. You might have to stand behind your team and say, hey, it's okay to fail and let's move forward. In one of the organizations where I was working, uh, there was a project uh, which was a disaster and uh, you know the director wanted everyone to leave or you know, uh, retrench and to ask for leaving people. But however, one level up, the senior management came up and said, hey, if you leave these people, they'll go to our competitors. So why don't we retain these people? Why don't we you know, have them and you know, let them learn from their mistakes and not repeat those mistakes, right? So those views are very, very important to understand what are the setbacks, what could be the reason. Sometimes, you know, you as a leader could be a, the problem in the room. You could be the elephant in the room, right? So you need to look how you need to navigate through those situations, what are the objectives of delivering results, so on and so forth. Conflict resolution, problem solving is very important. Conflicts are inevitable, right? No two siblings are alike, okay? We do have conflicts. We all have, you know, different views, uh, thoughts, right? Uh, when those get impacted, we have conflict. So we need to address those conflicts uh, and turn those conflicts into more positive, uh, you know, mechanism where, where you, you have people who make that into, you, you live in a world of constructive disagreement, right? So uh, disagreement is fine, conflicts are fine, but it should add value to your project rather than pull your project behind. Let's go next slide, please. Yeah, so integrating skills. So as a PMP certified person or the person who's planning to do PMP, uh, being a visionary is very important, all right? So previously in the previous PMBOK 6, I'm one of the con contributors for PMBOK and uh, I used to be the director for PMI Project Management Institute at Sydney. So what we did was instead of just talking about project, 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 we started scaling up to programs and portfolios and business and strategies. So in the PMP certification, we emphasize the role of a leader, okay? The role of leadership. Strategic planning is also being looked upon, okay? Not just at a project level, but a program and portfolio level is tested. The stakeholder engagement and communication is also uh, taken into consideration right? But how do you engage your stakeholders, right? How do you have, how do you increase your, you know, communication with them? How do you enable your project managers to manage the stakeholder expectations, whether you're using the power influence grid or salience metrics or any of that, right? So it's very, very important for us to, to, to manage and see how that leadership skills will work, right? And also equip uh, of getting feedback. Feedback is a gift, right? Receiving feedback, sending feedback is very, very important. So yeah, managing that feedback loop and feedback circle from the stakeholders, engage them frequently rather than just, you know, engaging towards the end and then you getting a surprise, that doesn't work, okay? So in a project management environment, in a, in a project management setting, it's all about the teamwork. If the team works well, you work well. Otherwise, it doesn't. All right, let's move next, please. Risk management, very important. Many people, you know, do not talk about risk. They feel that risk is a negative connotation. Risk means uncertainty, right? It could have a positive connotation or a negative, positive are called opportunities, negative are called threats. Uh, it is very important for us as project managers to in anticipate, so as, for the PMP certification, we focus a lot on risk management, decision making, right? And we talk about you know, using risk management for informed decision. Uh, 
uh, emphasizing on team development, motivation, uh, right? Motivating our team members. That's that's very important. Uh, continuous improvement and adaptability is important. Encourage this culture for continuous improvement and empowering teams, embracing learning from the past experience and not making those mistakes, right? So not human to make mistakes, but not repeat mistakes, right? At the end, when you close a project, our project implementation report or closure report, honestly tell that, yes, these were the mistakes, these were the challenges, this is what the problem we had, all right? So that is very, very important. The continuous improvement, adaptability, empowering project managers, going back, learning from your mistakes, those things play a very, very important role. And celebrate your success important, but also learn to celebrate your failures, okay? Because in one failure, there's a lot of learn from failures okay that's the important takeaway from this class never shy we've been brought up in an atmosphere where failing is bad right and i'm going to share my honest uh, you know experience with you uh, when i was in year four i moved from a different country to india and as i came into the school there were you know unit tests and class tests tests happening and i never came from an environment where there were tests right uh, yeah, and suddenly in one of the tests, I scored a single digit, right? And in front of my whole class, my teacher said, oh, this person may not study well and made a not a very good remark. I took that to my stride and I said, no, I need to excel in the subject. I need to excel in whatever I've done wrong. I took that as my pivot point. And I promised my mother that never in this subject and other subjects, I'm going to go down and I became a topper from year five and year six and seven and and yeah i'm still you know my study journey goes on i'm not bragging myself but it's important everyone has the pivot point right if you had a failed project never shy away from it okay never shy away from it be resilient resilience is very very important embrace the change see why did you fail learn from the mistake your your second project should be better than your first project your third project should be better than your first and second project right so this continuous learning and continuous adaptability plays a very important role in the life of project manager. Okay, thank you. Let's move. Right, high performing team. So high performing teams are teams who outperform other team members, right? They, they work collectively, right? So you need to empower your team members. You need to know them personally well. So when I used to lead teams in EMC and other organizations and I still lead teams, I go and talk to them personally, right? I have a personal connection. I have a personal talk, personal connections. Uh, you need to allow your team to use the strengths every day. You need to let go a few things, give them control, right? So they say, right, give control and uh, give control and uh, have leaders, right? So, so when you give control, you actually create leaders. When I used to work for EMC, Data Storage Solutions, uh, we used to have a manager who used to say, what do you think if he went with the problem? We thought he's a you know lazy project manager or he doesn't want to make a decision, but he was empowering us to make a decision. We learned that quite late that he was the one who was challenging us to think out of the box, right? Give them success, give them insightful questions, creating a circle of safety, having that safety net is very important. Showing appreciation is important. Developing the skills, nurturing the skills, right? Being a good leader is like being a parent, right? So as a parent, how do you develop the skills? How do you nurture the skills? That plays a very important role, right? So that plays a very important role. You need to show appreciation, thank them for what little they do and what more they do. That's, that's important, right? Ask questions which will make them think, which will make them ponder. That's very important. And uh, yeah, let's go next, please. You need to behave as a role model because they see you as a role model. You need to embrace empathy. You need to communicate and retreat your purpose, asking them why is it important. Encourage cross-team collaboration. Show that you trust them. Have regular catch-ups with them. Have coffee with them. Talk to them. Tell them why is it important. Give them something you something to own so that they can take, take them with you. Right, so have regular catch-ups. 
uh, show that you trust them, show that you are there for them, right? And uh, yeah, encourage cross-team collaboration. Let them learn from one another. Let them learn from one team and you know communicate to the other team members. That is very important because your team members want to learn new skills, new knowledge, right? So that is very, very important. Embrace empathy, right? As a leader, you need to put yourself in their shoes, right? There's a very good book called Emotional Intelligence 2.0. I'm not sure how many people have read it. I just love this book. It's my favorite, right? So yeah, read this book. Uh, it gives you a little test and that test tells you where are you in emotional intelligence quotient, right? The biggest victim of emotional intelligence are, um, are, are our family members, right? So they are the family members who are the ones who are the victims. Thank you. Let's move on. Yeah, inspirational leadership and project environment. Yes, this is a beautiful video. So uh, the key takeaways from the videos, okay? I'm on slide 19 after the video, okay? Uh, the key takeaways uh, video. Uh, I'm not sure how many people have seen this video before. Uh, have you worked with a leader who has inspired you, who has motivated you, who has, uh, you know, um, worked with you and your well-being, anyone can share your thoughts and I will share my thoughts uh, as to which leader I worked and, you know, what was my experience. Can anyone raise hands, unmute? Uh, okay, two participants. Yes. Avishik, yes, Avishik. So hi everyone, this is Abhishek. Uh, I just wanted to share one of my very first experience uh, working with a leader. Um, I was uh, in Pune that time and you know, obviously uh, joined a big multinational IT company, uh, you know, working under a senior manager who was managing an account of more than 400 people that time. So, you know, I can recall one thing that, you know, on a, on a Thursday evening, I went to my manager and, you know, uh, you know, asked him for, for, you know, five, 10 minutes to discuss about some of the project related updates. Obviously that guy was busy attending in different meetings and all, you know, having all the headgears on and etc. So he said, uh, Avishek, I will get back to you uh, because I'm in the middle of a meeting and I, and I, and I went away. Believe me or not, on a Saturday evening around 9 p.m., I was, you know, at my place. It was not an official day, working day. And suddenly I got a call in my mobile uh, and it was that my manager, you know, he called me up and he said, hey, Abhishek, I was extremely busy on Thursday and Friday. And now today on Saturday evening, I got some time. Why don't we can talk? Now, I was extremely surprised and happy at the same time because being a youngster and, uh, you know, uh, talking or communicating to a, such a, a senior manager on a weekend, I never expected that. And as a result, we just spent around five, 10 minutes over the phone and immediately on Monday morning, he set up a session with us and, you know, he addressed all the issues. So... You know, I, I wanted to share this uh, experience of mine because, uh, you know, f f uh, especially on a corporate uh, infrastructure or a corporate culture, uh, you know, uh, associates who are who are fresher or on the junior level versus the people who are on the senior management, they rarely talks at this at these days. Okay. Uh, you know, either their requests are not being prioritized or, you know, they kept it on hold for, I don't know, for N number of days. But this guy of, of uh, you know, whom I worked with, he was very proactive. He kept my words. He kept his promises as well and reached out to me, solved my problem on immediate basis. That shows that this person cares for me and his team members. And also, you know, he has a jail or he has a, you know, he, he immediately inspired me on his uh, proactiveness. So that's all I wanted to share here. Absolutely, Vishay. That's what we remember, right? That little gesture, right? It looks little at that moment, but the connection what he made was lasting, right? 
Correct. Uh, you will remember him all his all your life and his life and give examples in the forums where they come, right? So that's really heartening to hear. You get very, you know, uh, very few people who care for people, right? A good leader is like a parent, as I mentioned, who cares for people, people's well-being, right? Because at the end of the day, it's the people are the asset, right? The relationship is the asset. Okay, that's that's how things are built. Thank you, Abhishek, for sharing. Anyone else? Hands up. I think there's a Anyone else wants to share your story before I share mine? Anybody else? Please do watch that video. It's a beautiful video. You will love it. Okay, you'll really, really love the video. Okay. All right, my experience. Okay, my experience. I had a fortunate. I was fortunate enough to work with many such leaders. Okay. Uh, there was a leader who stood by us made a decision, right? And when the decision went wrong, he was the first one who said, if you want my team member to be sacked, please sack me first, okay? He stood before us. He stood before us and he he stood and he said, you know, we, we took a decision as a team, it's not me, right? Uh, that is one leader uh, I still remember. And then um, when when I was in EMC acquiring a VMware, right? So VMware was up for sale. This was 2006, right? We had a leader, Joe Tucci, who saw the future and inspired us and said, go and acquire VMware at any cost, right? Uh, it was up for sale for 300 million. And, you know, Cisco was looking at maybe 500 million and uh, other companies were looking, but we paid 900 million. We never thought when EMC was acquired by Dell, the valuation of VMware itself was, I think, close to five or six billion dollars, right? So some leaders, they see the future, they empower people and they say, yes, this is the intent, this is the direction I want you to go. And yes, you can go, you can conquer, you can acquire, right? So those, those type of leadership plays an important role. And these leaders shape our life, okay? These are the ones who shape our life. These are the ones who have a lasting thought. Okay, so that is where it is very, very important. All right, next slide. Uh, tools for effective project leadership. Okay, uh, so the tools what we have is encourage one-on-one -on -one conversation. Nurture two-way communication. Talk, talk, talk to people. It's very important. Get get things out of your heart. Be, bring consistency in your communication. Make use of visual aids, all right? Uh, show pictures. Show what the future looks like, okay? Uh, train your staff for effective communication is very important, right? Training your staff for effective communication is important. Uh, and, and also, uh, don't allow team to put things under the carpet, okay? That's very important. Uh, and that happens because lack of trust, okay? Trust plays a very important role. As a leader, you need to bond with your team members, provide that trust, Ensure that space of safety, security net, right? You're there in the right of them. You're there in the left of them. You know that you're the leader. You're the ones who inspire people, right? Nurture communication. Have consistency in your communication, right? Make use of visual aids. Train your staff effectively, right? And use agile problem-solving techniques. Next slide. Uh, a problem well stated is half solved. okay? So ask questions like who, when, where, what, right? Uh, don't try to poke at the solution at the point, right? Uh, use, use agile principles wherever it's required. I do a lot of agile trainings. I do skilled agile trainings, disciplined agile trainings, uh, right? Project management trainings so on for knowledge, right? So look, look for what skills you can. You can use problem solving techniques like 5Y, Ishikawa diagram, fishbone diagram, which we teach in the project management class, the Pareto charts, right? So look at the problem, look at the problem from all different angles, okay? Allow your teams to articulate and, and tell them tell them to articulate what the problem is and ask them, how do you think you can solve the problem, okay? Instead of you giving a solution, tell them, how do you think they can solve the problem and make them feel confident that how can you make them be successful, okay? So the good, the best question you can ask is, what can I do to make you successful? Okay, it's not about yourself, it's about the team. Okay, it's very important to make your team successful and that plays a very important. 
Well, any questions, thoughts, comments? Questions? Everyone look silent on a Thursday afternoon. Anybody else have any questions or any suggestions? So maybe I could share the link of the upcoming trainings. If people want to join any of the batches, they can. I'll be more than happy to serve you. I look forward to be part of your trainings and uh, be a mentor in this journey. I'll share my LinkedIn details. You can add me on LinkedIn if that interests you and we can get connected. Any questions, anybody? All right, I'll post my details of my LinkedIn on the chat. Can I put it in the chat? Okay, how to start a PMP career after certification. First of all, to have a PMP, you need five years of project management experience, Rachel. If you do not have five years of project management or four years of project management experience, you go for a CAPM. Okay, CAPM is the program. Pretty much similar to what we do in PMP, but the intensity is less. Okay, uh, look for roles within your circles, right? Look for any roles which are more, uh, you know, voluntary based, build up referenceability and move forward. Okay. Stay connected with me on LinkedIn. Yes, if there's some suggestions or things like that, I'll be more than happy to guide you through that. Okay. And our career councils will also help you from Knowledge Hub, right? You can reach them out and they will also guide you through uh, in your career development. All right. Anyone else? Can share your experience in this session? What was the session? Are you giving a survey or something like that? Yeah, after this session, there will be a survey. Okay. Once the session is ended. Thank you, Rama. Valuable. Yeah, not a question, but thought. The team makes them more closer to the leadership. Yeah, it's very important for a leader. That's right. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you, Pradesh. The leader is that that cement between the brick, right? The, with the bricks are the team members. Yeah. Are we going to get some course completion certification? I'll pass this on to Samia. For this session, uh, no, Vishik. For this session, uh, we're not doing any certificate. What kind? Um, can you elaborate? I mean, uh, for this webinar or for any course? Same for the course, uh, for this session, for this webinar, any PDUs or something people can claim? Um, no, ma'am, sir. This was we just... Can, we can try to have these webinars and give PDUs to people. It's just an attendance certificate, he's saying. Yes, Junalin, you have raised your hand. You have anything to ask? Oh, oh yes. Um, I just want to give you my thoughts. So I attended this uh, training session and I basically really blocked my working time because I like the subject, which is the, you know, leading with an impact. So um, I, I really appreciate for, for, for all of this setup. And I, I know that, you know, you're giving this as like a freebies. And I really thank you. But I was expecting more, just to be honest. So I like all this very simple techniques, very simple advices that you have in the slides. But I'm just looking for more, right? <laughs> it seems no, like I'm can. really hungry. A little bit, yeah, I wanted to see more. And I wanted to really like, like get closer to, to what are those things that we need to do so that we can lead um, our team as an impact, even though you're not, a, you're not holding a leadership position, but as an individual, you know? Yeah. So I, I like you and I like this session and I just wanted more. <laughs> well, definitely we can yeah. do more. 
definitely we can yes. do more. Number one, yes. we can get more connected. Uh, I've shared my LinkedIn details. You can send a uh, text or things like that where, where possible, number one. Number two, we do have training sessions, two-day trainings, three-day trainings. PMP is a four-day training, right? Uh, please do enroll. I'll be more than happy to guide you through that. Formally, informally, uh, I can talk a lot about leadership. That's my area of research. And I can bore yeah. you for the next 10 days if you would like to. But, uh, this <laughs> yeah, is just that's... a teaser, a sample, okay? So if you have any yeah. questions, Thank you, so much. If mm -hmm. you feel that you need any attention, send me a chat on WhatsApp, right? I can, I can send you some links for reading if you feel that you need assistance. Please do join us for our trainings. The four-day trainings are very, very exhaustive, 36 hours trainings, okay? You'll learn only about project management, leadership, all the skills, all the techniques, how do you manage your teams, right? So, yeah, definitely. Oh, oh yeah, I, I took the training of PMP oh. last December, and then oh, I took my exam a few days ago. I'm already PMP certified. Oh, <laughs> yeah, from, with the help of Knowledge Heart, with our uh, wonderful um, instructor, and yeah. and then then I got this um, this course in on my Prism um, page, and I'm just like, oh, I love this session. And then this is where I attended. I really block my calendar and put a reminder as well because I don't want to miss it. <laughs> and then the last time you 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 actually had change of schedule, and go, oh, okay, it's fine. This is a good way. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for that. Thank mm. you so much for that. And yeah, I really like appreciate the words what you just mentioned but yes uh definitely there's there's more to come i'll, I'll add more probably uh Soumya, i think we should do this as a series maybe next session we yes, should take this to the next level right we should take this into the next level more advanced uh topic on leadership so yeah somebody's asked my details uh yeah yeah linkedin and whatsapp contact details whatsapp number is so yeah, Pratyush, uh, you've asked like any agile trainings coming up. Sure. Uh, I'll do one thing. I'll pass on uh, your contact uh, to our um mentors here. So they'll contact you and guide you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Rachel, I think we should we should have uh we should have a session on how to prepare for PMP and so on and so forth. We could we could have that also as one of the topic. Uh, please make a note, Sonia, about you know the PMP exam. What what insights we need, right? So yeah, that should be good. Um, Sonia Krishnan, right. yes, uh, we are planning more sessions with Mansoor. Um, yes. sessions will be live uh, as soon as possible on our website. Yeah. Next session, I was planning to do something on artificial intelligence with project management, the role of AI into project management. That's what I wanted. I was thinking that was interesting. So just thinking of that next, hopefully, or maybe we can extend this leadership to the next level and talk about it. I'll discuss with Swami. Every month we'll have a session. Sorry for missing out the January one, the new year one. Yeah, but we'll have the next one in March. So yeah, we could do that. Um, please share the details of upcoming PMP exam training. Mm -hmm. And you'll get a call, uh, Subramaniam. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, team. Well, I give you back one minute. Apologies for the eight nine minutes hiccups in the beginning. Uh, yeah, and thank you for accommodating me for this webinar. It was really a pleasure talking to each one of you, and I'll see you all in the next webinar. Yeah. Or actually, it is not yet scheduled yet. Uh, we are still in still planning the session. So yeah. yeah, one of the topic. That's one of the topic coming up. Not sure whether it'll be for this next upcoming or the one after. I need to discuss that with Sonia. That is what we will do in the next one or two days and roll out the next schedule. Okay. Yes. So thank you everyone for taking your time to join this session and I hope to see you all in the next sessions as well. Uh, please yeah. visit our knowledge at website uh, for more such ses uh, sessions and please get registered. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you everybody. Thank you everyone. Thank you.